Hey guys, Greg Benz here. Adobe just released an awesome new feature to create HDR panoramas like this one in a single step, which can save you tremendous amounts of time. I previously did a tutorial showing the old method to do this in Lightroom. So let me just recap that, which is I have 24 different exposures behind this image with three different exposures in each of eight different camera positions. So I just swept left to right, taking three exposures at each position. And then to combine them the old way, you would select your different brackets in one position, merge them as an HDR, and then select the next camera position, merge that HDR, and so on until you had all the different camera positions. So that would give me eight different HDRs. Then you would merge those together as a panorama. And each individual step wasn't that difficult, but it was time consuming. And the whole process of just simply merging all of these into one raw file took about 45 minutes or maybe even a little bit longer. So it's a pretty laborious process. Well, Adobe has significantly sped that up. We can now do that in a single step. What you need to do now is just simply select all the images, right click, go to photo merge, and you'll see this new option called HDR panorama. Just click on it, give it a moment to render the preview. You'll then be presented with this dialog where you have a few different options to complete the merge, and it should look very familiar from the old process. You'll have a projection option up top. Spherical is the best choice if you have a multi-row panorama. Cylindrical is usually the one you're gonna want, especially for a single row panorama. And then you have some options for how to deal with these blank pixels you get in the corners, these missing pixels. You can use boundary warp, which will automatically try and fill these areas in. Of course, you could try and manually fix this in Photoshop later. I tend not to do that. It's usually easy to do it here. And then there's auto crop, which will just cut down the image until it eliminates all this white, which is oftentimes pretty aggressive. If you use a little bit of boundary warp, you're moving that edge up and you'll keep a lot more image when you use auto crop. So I like to turn on the auto crop and then just simply move the boundary warp to find the projection of the image that I like best. And in this case, I'd probably leave the whole thing to keep more of these foreground rocks, maybe a little bit off that maximum looks really nice. You can use auto settings, which is just simply gonna turn on various sliders automatically on the raw file and you can adjust them later. I tend to leave this off and just process it the way I want to manually. And then you can automatically create a stack. So the 24 images behind this will be stacked with this image, which just simplifies things. So these are the settings I would typically use. Cylindrical, some amount of boundary warp that I would test, auto crop and create stack. Please note that you cannot turn on deghosting here and you cannot turn off auto alignment. So if you wanna change those for any reason, then you can go back to the old process I showed you previously, but that probably won't be necessary. I generally find that this new approach works very well. Then just click merge. And you can see here, we now have our finished DNG file. It's in a stack. So if I click on this little icon here, the 24 original exposures are still sitting behind it, which you can use if you need to, but we're ready to go. If we just double click on it, we can zoom into the detail and you can see that there's no issues with the panorama. Things look really good, tremendous detail. The pixels look awesome. And if we jump over to the develop module, we can see that there's plenty of detail in the highlights as well as in the shadow. So all the detail in this raw file, this single raw file that we'll need to create this finished image here, except we did it much faster. Previously, it took me about 45 minutes to do the whole thing. With this particular blend, it took less than five minutes. It was about two minutes to create the preview, a few seconds for me to adjust settings, and then the output once I clicked the merge button actually took only about 90 seconds. So a really simple but powerful new addition to Lightroom. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Please be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified of new tutorials as soon as they're available.